Hi, and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe the structure and function of the nucleus in cells. OK, now, in order to appreciate the role of the nucleus, you need to understand the importance of proteins to living organisms. Firstly, enzymes are proteins, and enzymes are required for all the chemical reactions taking place in cells. Other proteins play a structural role in cells, for example, moving organelles to where they're needed. And some proteins act as transport molecules, for example, haemoglobin, which transports oxygen in mammals. So, protein synthesis is one of the most important functions taking place in cells. Protein synthesis involves several different organelles. Firstly, the instructions for encoding the amino acid sequence of a protein are contained within the gene for that protein. And these genes are part of the chromosomes, which we find in the nucleus. To synthesize a protein, the genetic information encoded by that gene is converted to messenger RNA or mRNA. This process is called transcription. This mRNA then leaves the nucleus. Now, a ribosome reads the information contained in the mRNA and synthesizes the protein molecule. And this is called translation. Now, if the protein remains in the cytoplasm, for example, a cellular enzyme, then translation will take place on a free ribosome in the cytoplasm. However, some proteins are secreted from cells, for example, digestive enzymes and antibodies. Secreted proteins are translated on a ribosome attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. These proteins then make their way through the rough ER and the Golgi apparatus before leaving the cell. We'll be looking at these organelles in later videos. So it's really important that you appreciate the role of the nucleus in protein synthesis. OK, let's take a look at the structure of the nucleus. The first idea you need to understand is that the nucleus contains a material called nucleoplasm. Nucleoplasm contains molecules such as nucleotides and enzymes, which are needed for DNA and RNA synthesis. Surrounding the nucleus, we have a double membrane. Scientists call this the nuclear envelope. I'm showing you a close-up of the nuclear envelope here, and you can see that it consists of two phospholipid bilayers. Now, within the nuclear envelope, we find nuclear pores. The function of the nuclear pores is to allow molecules to enter and leave the nucleus. For example, RNA nucleotides enter the nucleus through nuclear pores from the cytoplasm. And these nucleotides are used in the nucleus to synthesize messenger RNA. The messenger RNA then leaves the nucleus via a nuclear pore and undergoes translation on a ribosome. Now, the outer membrane of the nuclear envelope is continuous with the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And as we saw before, the rough endoplasmic reticulum plays a role in protein synthesis. I'm showing you an electron micrograph of a nucleus here. As you can see, the nucleus contains a dark material. Scientists call this chromatin. Chromatin consists of DNA coiled around proteins called histones. And together, the DNA and histone proteins form chromosomes. Remember that the DNA in a chromosome is a linear molecule. In other words, the ends of the DNA are not joined to form a loop. And you need to remember that chromosomes are not visible inside the nucleus unless the cell is undergoing mitosis or meiosis. Inside the nucleus, we can see a region which is darker than the rest. This is called the nucleolus. The nucleolus is where a special type of RNA is produced. This is called ribosomal RNA, or rRNA. Ribosomal RNA forms part of the structure of ribosomes. And as well as forming rRNA, the nucleolus is also where ribosome subunits are assembled. OK, so hopefully now you can describe the structure and function of the nucleus.